Good morning, Joel here from JST Woodcraft. I was asked to do a video on how I cast uh, my tubes after I've decorated them uh, with the uh, labels. So we're gonna kind of go through this process this morning. I have Illuminite here this morning. This is a new product for me. I've been using it to cast uh, complete blanks. I haven't used it for the tube casting. So this is a bit of an experiment captured on video. There's a fair amount of heat generated from the aluminite curing process. So I'm not quite sure how the labels are gonna react to that. Before I've been using PR resin, um, polyester resin. A Couple things I love about the aluminite is the odor factor is way lower. Um, once the, this goes in the pressure pot uh, to keep the bubbles out, uh, you got about two hours set time and the PR takes about 24 hours unless you know, you introduce heat to the process, which is just a lot of extra work, I think. So we're trying something new today. Um, I have my molds here. These molds came from uh, our friends at Wood and Whimsies. They take about an ounce, so they don't use a lot of resin to get what you need done. They do a good job of keeping the uh, resin out of the tubes and whatnot. So first step is to uh, plug up our tubes so that we don't have any... Uh, resin get it in there so i really give these a good firm push you want a good solid seal also make sure between uh processes that you get all of the uh resin material off of here uh before you uh put it in here otherwise you end up with little stray flakes that are just going to cause you problems then all you do is you just tuck those silicone things into the grooves into the holes that are already in the mold there um and makes for a, a nice seal so we'll repeat that process. <clears throat> a lot of times uh, when I'm doing these, I get a little white at the bottom or the top. That seems to go away uh, when I square up the blank. It's generally not a problem. Um, I hope I'm not giving bad advice to everybody, but you know, for me, it's, it's been working just fine. So I've got these nice and tucked into the mold. I've got my Alumilite poured, part side A, side B. Uh, side B is pretty thick, a little more tricky to measure than the side A. Uh, you know, a lot of the things that uh, I hear, and certainly this has worked well for me, you got to mix the daylights out of this stuff. And that includes, you know, getting the sides and the bottoms of the cup and everywhere. You need absolutely as close as you can get to a one-to-one -one ratio for this to cure properly. I got these solo cups. I got two huge towers of them. Uh, very inexpensive, recyclable. And this is where I, I do most of my mixing. These little measuring cups came from our friends at Illumilite. So I'm just going to pour in my side A. And I do my best to get out of most out of here. And normally I would measure this by weight. And I would mix them both parts right into this cup. And that way I know I have exactly the amount. But with this small amount that I'm mixing, um, and not quite sure yet how much... Um, Three quarters of an ounce basically of these two things weigh. Uh, I'm kind of doing it with these cups that our friends at Illumilite were uh, kind enough to send to us. So seven minutes, that's your magic number. You got seven minutes to get this properly mixed and your pour complete and your product in the uh, pressure pot and under pressure so that you don't have a bubble problem. One other thing that can happen is if you don't get the silicone nibs properly pressed into your tubes and secured during the curing process air can leak out from within the tube and can cause some damage towards the end there that can you know affect the outcome of your final product so again make sure those things are in the nice and tight as you notice i'm holding this it's not because i'm getting ready to have a shot here i just uh, don't want to mix it until we're ready so i'm going to put this in here we're going to give it a good mix minute or two scraping the edges scraping the bottom not going overly aggressive to create a froth. Um, I'm not mixing egg whites here, but just enough to make sure that it's properly mixed. You will see some discoloration in the beginning, which certainly helps in the process of uh, stirring because as that goes away, it's kind of an indication, at least that's what I've, I've seen, an uh, indication that your uh, curing process or your, your mixing process is going well. I'm going to pour these both in here, then I'm going to gently pick this up uh, we're going to move it to the side, put my pressure pot on top, and we'll put it under pressure, and uh, we'll wait for two hours and see how the results are. All right, so let's get this going here.
or like I said, the B side is substantially thicker. So I'm going to kind of help this along because I do not have all the time in the world to uh, wait for every little last bit to drip out. And of course, we know we left some in the other one too. So, all right, and you'll see this is how it starts to look. You, you have to get that. It has to be perfectly clear. So you can use a popsicle stick, you know, anything that uh, you have on hand. Coffee stirrer might work, although I don't think they're rigid enough. Um, so if you have kids and they eat popsicle sticks, have them tell them to save them. And if not, uh, they're pretty inexpensive on Amazon, so you can buy them in mass quantities. Uh, just do be careful. They're easily confused with paint sticks, which are entirely too big for this process. All right. So we're scraping the bottoms, scraping the sides, trying to do everything we can to make sure that that one-to-one -one mixture is good. And you can see it's pretty, uh, pretty bubbly in there. Uh, in the PR resin world, this would terrify me because all of these bubbles would have to be removed by hand. Uh, we're going to deal with this through um, the pressure prop. I hope it works. I'm a little, uh, a little dubious because that's a that's a lot of bubbles. That's more than I usually see even when I mix this. Uh, when I've played with this before, so. But when I've done castings, no bubbles comes out looking good. So. I think I am ready to uh, put this in here. So real simple. I just try to get very close. And I try to pour right onto the tube. You know, let the tube dispense down below. I, th I feel like when I pour it over the tube, it creates a thin film of the material as it goes in. And that thin film helps the uh, bubbles come to the top. I've also know with these molds, you really have to make sure you get it filled right to the top. Uh, if you don't, you end up with a mold that has uneven uh, it's thicker on the bottom than it is in the top, and you can have some challenges with your turning and it getting a little too close to the blank, uh, I mean to the tube as you would like. So you really want to make sure you have proper fill here. And you know what, a little spill, certainly worth a good outcome. I do notice most of these bubbles seem to be rising to the top on their own, so that's probably a good thing. Alright, so now I'm going to make some room here. As you can tell, I don't do this often, so I don't keep my pressure pot up here. And this is going to be a little difficult for everybody to see because everything's so high. So we're going to get the pressure pot open. And for those of you who have uh, not seen this before, this is the paint can, the uh, paint pressure tank, basically that, that you know we've just done some modifications to to work. In this pressure process and what I'm doing right now is just making sure that you know, I've got my seals here this o-ring here is clean so I can get a nice tight seal I've also put inside here I made a little uh, little disc because the bottom is uh, convex and uh, you know things won't sit properly in there so in with the mold try to carefully keep it uh, Nice and flat. On goes the top. I've gotten some great advice from some people online. Lines lines here to line up with my screws and uh, screw opposite ends together at the same time. It helps to prevent your pot from twisting on you while you're putting these on really tight. And it also helps with a uniform settling of the lid so the lid doesn't bend a little bit and you don't have a problem with uh, leakage and I do have security safety measures on here I don't know if you can really see them on the camera but there is a safety valve here uh, it's set you know below the tanks uh, maximum pressure and I also have this valve assembly here it tells me the pressure and this makes sure that no more pressure than what I want actually comes into the tank and this is my inlet over here so I am going to go and grab my pressure line. If you don't have an air compressor in your shop, I highly recommend it. It's got a thousand and one uses. 
And that's how I manage dust in my environment. All right, so closing the valve, I'm gonna attach, attach my air compressor, and I'm just gonna slowly let the air in here. And, uh, sorry for this terrible filming here. I'm trying to let everybody see as much as I can. So you're gonna see the pressure, that's important. All right, so like I said, it's important to have an air compressor. Uh, I have a small pancake air compressor, so every time I'd use it, uh, it has to repressurize. So my apologies for the loud noise at the end over there. You can see the pressure is set here. So this is this is where the work magic happens inside. I wish they could make these pressure pots uh, uh, clear so that you could see what's going on. I am detecting a little bit of a leak around the edge, and that's okay. I'll manage that through through the valve and uh, make sure that I don't have the pressure drops too low. It's also important to note, for those of you that aren't familiar with these things, the black lines here are uh, metric. And uh, those of us in the continental United States, we're not metric. So you have to follow the red lines. So be careful, don't be fooled in thinking this is your 40 to 50 range, because it's really not. It's the 70 to 80 range PSI, and you're uh, likely to have a tank failure if you go down that path. I don't know how these things are rated. You know, it says 60 PSI. I don't know, 61 pounds, do you have a problem? Can you go to 80? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't want to find out either. So here we go. So now we've got two hours. We're going to let this sit, and uh, I'll come back. In a couple hours, we'll pull this out and we'll finish up the rest of the video.